Good. So welcome to this presentation of Jumbo, the Unity Build System for Chromium. My name is Daniel Bratel, and I'm going to talk you through the background and the implementation and the results of Jumbo. So feel free to ask questions if anything is unclear, but uh, I might be a little bit tight on time. So if there's anything big, you can approach me after this, maybe. So the The really short presentation is that, uh, yeah, Jumbo works, it give, makes builds three times faster, and it can make it nine times faster. And now, if people feel like falling asleep, this is, now I have the critical part. But if we start with the background, the problem is that Chromium compilations are very long. Uh, and this is bad for many reasons. And I should say, when I say very long, I mean extremely long. We're talking about something like 36 CPU hours to compile Chrome and Content Shell. And even if you have a good computer, this turns out to be many hours. And you've probably seen this before. Uh, compiling can be like a good rest time, but I think there are limits to this. Uh, there are also certain other effects you get from long compilations. You get uh, problems in your, in your uh, uh, like continuous integration systems. You get release problems. We have had releases that have missed the release date because compilations took too long. Can't go into details, but it's was very frustrating. And of course, we consume a lot of uh, time, both consume both computer time and developer time, that could be used for much more interesting things. So, when did this happen? Um, I guess it started bad and became worse. This is uh, data from one of our. Uh, build machines, a build machine we've been using for five years. So I could dig back and look at how long did we use, how long did builds used to take, and how long do they take now. And the, the result is pretty scary. In five years, we've gone from 34 minute builds to almost four hour builds. And this just don't, that's there is like no sign that this will change or that will, it will improve. So this just can't go on. We had to do something. The first thing we thought that, oh, someone has checked in something bad. We need to fix it. But whenever you look at these graphs and you try to zoom in and you try to find out why is it slow, what has someone done, you find nothing. There is like no single commit anywhere that's making things slow. It's just. Uh, a sum of a lot of bad parts, or good parts, actually. A sum of a lot of good parts resulting in this. Uh, one thought might be like, oh, you, you talked about an old machine. You should use a new machine. But it turns out that new machines are not fast enough. The machines are not getting faster. The only thing you can actually do is switch to more expensive machines. And if you split, if you switch to more expensive machines, it will only solve the problem for a short while until we get even more expensive machines, and finally run out of under money or machines. So, looking at more in detail, what is it that happens during a build? We have three distinct phases or classes of time consumers. It takes time to generate source code. And in Chromium, you generate lots of source code. It takes time to compile the source code into object files. And it takes time to uh, combine those object files into final binaries. In a full tree, in a full build, the compilation step is 
the by far biggest step. If you do incremental builds, other steps might be more expensive, but in a full build, it's almost full all compilation. And again, you dig down and see, oh, we have something that compiles slowly. And there is no single file that compiles slowly. Everything is it's just a sum of a lot of small parts. And when I say small parts, I mean small parts. The median size file of in Blink is actually just 100 and something. Uh, yeah, about a hundred hundred lines. This was before they moved their everything, so that's why I'm talking about CPP files. And a hundred lines isn't that much. The big problem here becomes is what's happened after the pre-processing your 100 line files become 244,000 line files. Because as we learned, most of the files we compile are actually headers. If we split up the files in headers and CPP file, you will see the CPP file in the purple line at the top and the rest is headers. So basically, we're spending all the time compiling headers. Headers compile faster, so OK. But still, almost all the time is headers, like 95%. The typical solution when you present this problem to someone is that, oh, you should use pre-compiled headers. Pre-compiled headers will solve this problem. And pre-compiled headers was introduced in all compilation systems to solve this problem. With pre-compiled headers, which are different in different compilers, you will create some kind of intermediate format for the header files, and which is supposed to be much faster to compile. But it turns out that uh, of these, like 95% of the time, most of it is still there, even with pre-compiled headers. It saves, it saves time. It isn't bad. It saves like 10, 20% of the time. Could it be even more? I guess it depends on exactly what you include in them. But most of the time, it's still there. In 2015, we did add pre-compiled headers to Blink. We did add uh, document.age and uh, layout node, layout object.age to pre-compiled headers, which meant basically that most of, of the link was pre-compiled. And we did get an improvement. The improvement was noticeable. We can see them in the graphs, walking back in time. But it only delayed the problem. It didn't really help anything. Uh, well, it helped, but it didn't remove the problem. So, if something doesn't work, you need a bigger hammer, right? And in the, if pre-compiled headers don't work, the bigger hammer is a unit to build. So, unit to builds. For those of you who don't, don't know what unit build is, <laughs> unit build is, it is um, it's just actually not complicated. You combine a lot of CC files or CPP files in a single translation unit, and you compile them. You send them all at once to the compiler, which means that you only include the header files once. You only pre-process the header files once. You only instantiate uh, templates once. And you save a lot of time this way. Uh, there are different things that this improve, uh, which has, I was just say, this is common in large projects, uh, not uncommon at least, and it's been common in the games industry. In the games industry, they've used this as a full program optimization tool before full program optimization, I guess. 
But for us, it's basically compile time. That's what we want to gain. It's actually been used in Chromium before as well. If you have studied V8 bindings, you have, might have noticed that they are compiled in, in big chunks. That is a unity build solution. SQLite, or however you pronounce that, SQL, SQL uh, whatever, uh, is also using this, but they call it amalgamation. And I heard that recently, just now I heard that uh, WebKit has been using Jumbo uh, Unity builds since uh, February. We're going to call this Jumbo builds, this Unity build system. Mostly because when we called it Unity builds, people thought we talked about uh, the 3D engine. So if you heard rumors about someone adding a 3D engine to Chromium, that might be our fault. Anyway, we switched to Jumbo as a name. We, it comes from an older Unity build system, so for us it's, it's a name we know. So today, Jumbo is implemented through a GN template. And if you want to add Jumbo support to your code, it is not more complicated. It can, it might be as easy as this. You include the Jumbo template, and you write Jumbo source set instead of source set. <coughs> what can happen is that these files, file one, file two, file three, in some way clash, and you might have, solve, have to solve compilation problems. But that's basically it. It's not more complicated than this. What the template does is that it generates a Jumbo file a number Jumbo file, because we might have many Jumbo files per target. And it includes a number of files in it. In this case, file one, file two, file three, another file. And then uh, we send this file to Ninja, and it, Ninja compiles it, says uh, it will have compiled any other file with the same flags, same defines. And it generates an object file that we move on with. If I take the directory that I used the example before, that was uh, actually core DOM, and put all 130 files there in one unit, this is the result we get. Suddenly we can actually see the lines of code that represents the source files. It's just 10% still. Most of the files is still headers. But now we're only compiling half only half the time is spent compiling headers, which means that we have a substantial less, substantially less overhead in our compile system. If you don't remember this, uh, very, very small. The green thing that is overhead, much is very large. Now it's much smaller. Uh, of course, it takes longer time to compile. Previously, the, the, this file took about five seconds to compile. Combining 130 files together, it takes 25 seconds. So five times longer, but you get 130 times as much work done. So it's a big win in compile times. Um, so you can liken this with having a big truck instead of having many small cars. I mean, there is a reason that why mining companies don't transport their ore in Ford pickup trucks uh, or you use big ships instead of lots of lorries if you have to transport something a long distance. It's the same idea. And it works. We started this um, last year. We started by adding Jumbo support to Blink. And um, this is the, the initial drop there immediately. 
And since then, we have added more and more Jumbo support to more and more parts of the tree. So we now have Jumbo support in, we have it in Blink, we have it in Blink test. We have it in content, we have it in V8, PDF, -ium, uh, UI, CC, and parts I'm probably not forgotten. But it's still, it's still a subset of the tree. It's not all of the tree. It's a subset, but it's an important subset. And the result is that what used to take three hours now take an hour and a half. You can be a little bit excited. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> Spontaneous. Um, at the same time, regular builds keep increasing in build time. And I can't really say why, but they keep increasing by 1% per, per week. Um, people do things. It's probably a good thing. But uh, one important uh, observation I do here is Jumbo builds are not affected by this increase. So you can see we have added things a few times. You can see the drops. Meanwhile, in the periods where we not added Jumbo support, it's flat lines. So they're not affected by, by this increase. And your guess might be as good as mine, but there's probably a clue here somewhere. I also want to mention the potential of Jumbo. I have a work branch which compiles in 40 minutes. So I know we can reach 40 minutes. Uh, that hasn't converted everything, so I think we can reach 30 minutes. So that's where I've drawn the potential line. I think about 40 min 30 minutes is probably the limit, which would be about nine times as fast as a normal build. Again, or, or maybe I didn't mention this. This is on the four core machine, a thread machine, uh, like a top consumer machine or a low end workstation. If you have different machines, you of course have different numbers. And Jumbo might not work as well, or it might work even better. And actually, um, sometimes Jumbo isn't even faster. It's always more efficient. I, some rough, cal rough calculations on a napkin told me that uh, we save about 150 watt hours per Jumbo build. Which is good, but it will not solve the climate change problem. Uh, the main problem here is that uh, you get a less parallel build. If I use the example we had before with the core DOM, we had 130 files. If you have 100 free cores, you can actually compile this, all these 130 files in parallel. If you combine them, you have to combine you. You can only use one, source, one core, which is much less efficient. So you get a less parallel build, and you get higher latency. If you're waiting for something and you have to wait for the whole Jumbo unit to compile, uh, you might have to wait a little bit longer. This is not an, an issue really for what I call normal hardware. Hardware where you, which you can expect uh, a student that wants to compile Jumbo, uh, wants to compile Chromium to have. But it is an issue if you have big distributed systems. If you have Goma, for instance, I don't have Goma, so I, I don't, all this is just rumors to me, but uh, you can have access to hundreds or thousands of cores, which means that Jumbo might actually not be faster for you. If you run this CC and ICC, again, it depends on your computer setup. It might be faster, it might not be faster. For most, it's faster. One thing that determines whether it's fast or not is uh, how you tune it. In my example, I used, uh, I said I combined 130 files. 
we have two supported configurations right now. They, it's eight files or 50 files. 50 files together seems to be a good configuration for, for normal machines. And eight files together seems to be a good configuration for, well, um, distributed systems that are not extreme. If I re return to this uh, picture, um, if you have a build assist, if you have a system where you do have a hundred lanes lane highway and you have a million cars, then yeah, it can be more efficient or be faster at least, not more efficient, but faster. So, so that said, Jumbo was kind of intended to help people that didn't have access to these kinds of systems, and it does help. We see improvements uh, of compilation time uh, by compilation becomes about somewhere between five or twenty percent faster per file. It depends a little bit on how big the files are. As I mentioned, the Blink, the files are really small, so you get lots of overhead, and Jumbo does a lot for you. In V8, the files are really large, less overhead, so you get a big, smaller speed up. But then <laughs> we also had some accidental positive effects, things that we didn't plan for, but we learned during the way. Um, the, the build trees shrunk a lot. Trees that used to be 20, 30, 40 megabytes were suddenly much smaller. Suddenly I could fit more build trees into my disk and onto my disk and it just worked. And I didn't really realize at first, but this, it was Jumbo that did this. And it makes sense. We generate fewer object files. And this also results in uh, faster linking. The linker has much less work to do. So uh, even if you have longer compilation steps, you might actually have faster linking. So you lose some, you gain some. It's complicated. And another interesting effect, speedometer is one to 2% faster in Jumbo builds compared to ordinary builds. Not that I recommend using this for releases because we have full program optimizations which are, which is solving this problem as well. Or PDO or whatever is the current state about. Uh, we also, in the process, <laughs> you, while doing this, uh, ended up doing lots of other positive changes to the code. We found duplicate code that we removed, mostly hyperfunctions and nothing really big. We found dead code that we removed because they caused certain linking errors. We cleaned up the code, adding include guards, much easier to handle the IPC headers nowadays. We solved the conflict between X11 headers and the D test, and lots of other similar things. So most of the work was actually kind of annoying, um, just renaming things, uh, finding code or symbols that clashed, and solving that, those clashes. It's not complicated. It's actually quite kind of easy if you know the code. You have code, you have the same name in two places, you figure out a new name, or you merge them, or you do something. But when you come as an outsider to code and want to change names, you might not get it right from the beginning. So that has been a little bit time consuming. And some other things that are not that important. Most of the problems we had are symbol clashes. Symbol clashes that also have caused uh, uh, the build to jumbo build to break. It breaks a couple of times per week. Every time it, every time that happens, uh, I and a few other people get the mail and we try to fix it. But we are really, really waiting for CQ support and. CQ support might be coming this week. It might, 
might be coming today. They, they're actually, I mean, I didn't know that this was that much work to add something to CQ, but uh, the guy in the infra team that's helping us with this, they've been changing lots and lots of code the last week just to make this happen. I don't understand. Should it be this complicated? <laughs> Apparently it is. So our to-do list right now is uh, CQ support. Uh, expand uh, Chromio, uh, Jumbo to much more of the tree, which is, will be easy to do once we have CQ support. And we're looking at doing native GN support. Um, also happening right now. Yeah, I think we have a couple of minutes. I think we have a couple of minutes. So if there are any questions, now is a good time. Yes, question. You mean just to you mean check in the merge file? Uh, you probably have to ask if people own the code. Uh, there is uh, like a rule. I don't know if it's written down, but it, there's a kind of rule that you have one class per file. Um, yeah, I didn't set the rules. I come uh, from our own jump, our own, own, our old code in uh, in Opera, and we kind of had the opposite problem. Hey, we, we had one file. Why not put everything in it? So, still had problems. Yeah, question. Sorry again. This uh, <laughs> the the first graph was from Windows, and the second graph was from Linux. So it's a little bit mixed, but uh, the, the platforms that use this at Opera, it's Android, uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. All of them, maybe. Uh, I don't think, okay, sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, I agree. Uh, though we, uh, we did come into this project because uh, compilation time started breaking our development. So you have to have a balance somewhere. Uh, I do, I do, I do. I wonder if I can get it. Can I get that graph somewhere? Uh, if you look at these slides, they will be linked from somewhere. There will be, there are more, there's more information in it. Uh, I couldn't show everything because it was, there was a time limit. This, the red line here is the number of, um, how the number of files have increased. So the last bip blip is that someone. Uh, oh, okay. Number of files. Have, yeah, yeah. Number of files have increased about the same. Um, if you look at number of targets to compile today and compare it to five years ago, it's same ish. Maybe twice as much, but not much more. Someone just committed 5 million lines of uh, Android tests. I don't really know what that was about, but <laughs> maybe someone does. And I think there was, yes. I love this. It makes, it makes our project easier for external contributors. I hope so. You are an expert in our build system now. Because <laughs> you saw, like, I saw the headers, I saw the uh, CCC file down, and how it's split between those two evenly. Uh, well, there's a thread right now on the Chromium dev mailing list about how we have a big bottleneck in the build system with V8. And it's not sold. 
the whole the whole build pauses in the middle, just waiting for V8 to compile, and then it continues. That's not very efficient, but we have no solution for that. But it happens in Goma, it happens in Java builds, it happens for everyone. So, and I should say that most of what I said here is very dependent on the exact hardware you have and the configuration you have. It might be worse, it might be better. It depends on exactly how you, what your system looks like. Hmm? Uh, we have compiled it with the ICC. And some people use it, some people don't, because uh, the gain is not as big. And in some cases, you might even have this loss of performance, because uh, you get longer. You can get a big uh, translation unit sent to a slow ICC slave. ICC build machine, and then you might have to wait a long time for that machine. So it's it's complicated, but uh, with tuning, you can probably get find an optimal solution where you have Jumbo and ICC. Yeah. I'm not really sure I understand the difference between pre-compiled headers and this. Pre-compiled headers, they call it pre-compiled headers, but they are only part partly compiled. They will uh, they do some pre-processing on it, but most of the job seems to still be there. Uh, most of the job seems to be to instantiate um, uh, templates, for instance, to generate debug information. All that is still there. So you cut a bit of the time, but not much. And I think we're out of time. So.